was referred to us in South Africa as the racist of all racists in South Africa by the Telegraph. He was a member of parliament in the South African parliament. His name, Clive Debbie Williams. He was born Clive John Debbie Williams on the 22nd of January in 1936. And he was born in the beautiful city of Cape Town, very close to the sea. When he was a little boy, he used to run on the sands of the sea. And he would sit down and watch the sea roll over and over. Now there was one time he went to the seaside with his parents. And he saw a black boy swimming in the sea. He got so angry he refused to get into the sea. It was at that point his parents realized that this was a boy who was growing to be a racist. He will not touch anything that was touched by black people. But they rest him up in the Catholic Church. Holy Mary, Mother of God, full of grace, pray for us sinners. You will hear him say. He started taking communion at a very young age. Oh, he even became an altar boy. Oh, interesting. Now the interesting thing, my brother, my sister, watch this. Mm -mm -mm. He left the Catholic Church and decided to join the Africana Church. It was a racist church that believed so much. In fact, using the Bible as a reason for racism, he joined the Africana Church. My brother, my sister, and that is the Africana Protestant Church, a very dirty racist. Listen to what happened now, brethren. Now ask Clive Debbie Williams, join the church. He increasingly grew very, 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 very wide apart from black people. He hated black people, even though he was born in a black land in 1936. Hear this now. He became one of the youngest members, my brother, my sister, of the national movement that was a volunteer movement in South Africa known as the Citizen Force. And the Citizen Force, my brother, my sister, was a volunteer movement in South Africa that was nationalistic in content. At 19, my brother, my sister, he became a member and he rose through the ranks and became a commander, the youngest to ever be part of the citizen force. Now, the citizen force is also known as the Union Defense Force, UDF. It comprised the armed forces of South Africa from 1st July 1912, when the Defense Act, Act took effect, two years after the creation of the Union of South Africa, until 1957, when it was reorganized and renamed the South African Defense Force. And their symbol is the head of the antelope because of the speed of the antelope and its agile eyes. My brother, my sister, Little did we know that he was joining all these forces to be able to know how to combat militarily and gorillary. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He wanted to be a gorilla fighter. He wanted to know all the ins and outs of weaponry and artillery. Jesus have mercy. And when he achieved that, he went into politics. My God. Ha! He was a member of the Conservative Party, which split from the National Party in 1982 due to softening of the government's apartheid policies of racial discrimination. Now, students, I need you to listen to this attentively. It used to be called the Conservative Party, and it was a party that was against black people deeply rooted in what is known as apartheid correct pronunciation apartheid my brother my sister 
Now, at the time, the Conservative Party became soft against racism and apartheid. And he got angry. They split from the party and got known as the National Party in 1982, still deeply rooted in racism. My brother, my sister, that was what he joined. Now, here it is now. He tried several times to become an MP. It was not possible. But he succeeded finally. Yes, when political parties were allowed, he joined and he was part of the official opposition from the Conservative Party, my brother, my sister. And he became their chief spokesperson on economic affairs, technology, and mineral affairs. He was the only member of the Conservative Party Parliamentary Caucus to have served in all four levels of government in South Africa. Then came a man by name Chris Harney. Correct pronunciation, Chris Harney. My God. Chris Harney was a very powerful spokesperson and the general secretary of the ANC. The ANC was almost the opposite of the National Party or the Conservative Party. One believed in racism and also in apartheid, whilst the other did not. And believed more in black power. Asi bonanga, asi bonafu mandela tu, asi bonaona. See what happened now. This is the photograph of Chris Harney. Correct pronunciation. My brother, my sister. Chris Harney became a powerful general secretary of the ANC, the African National Congress, led by Nelson Mandela. And of course, there was also Joe Slovo. My God, Chris Harney was so powerful. He was full of oratorial skills. When it came to oratory, you will not dare. To God be the glory. He became the most powerful force in the ANC. And then the MP, the racist MP, who we are talking about today, Clive, my brother, my sister, an honorable member of the South African parliament, got in contact with a killer, a murderer, a bloodthirsty racist, Janus Jacob Walus. Just listen to a name like that. Janus Jakub Walus. And that is him on the left, wearing the black and white petticoat. That is him. My brother, my sister. And if you look into his eyes, you see the eyes of a bloodthirsty murderer. It's terrible. Now, this guy here was born in Poland. His father brought him all the way to South Africa where the father had established a glass factory. And when he came in, he started to enjoy the country and he hated all black people. So, the man we're talking about today, Clive, Lewis, contacted him knowing how much hatred he had for black people. And he said, I have a contract for you. I need you to kill three people. Three people, I need you to kill three people. Number one, Nelson Mandela. Number two, Joe Slovo. And the third person is Chris Harney. Kill them. And I need evidence that they are dead beyond dead. Do you know what it means to say dead beyond dead? It means dead beyond resurrection. Hallelujah. So, Remember that he was a guerrilla fighter. Remember that he knew all about artillery and weaponry. Oh, God have mercy. So he got a gun and told him, you see this gun? Even a blind man cannot miss. Take the gun. Go and kill them. Janus saw number one as Nelson Mandela on the hit list. Number two was Joe Slovo, whose photo you saw earlier, the black and white photo. Joe Slovo, my brother, my sister, was number two, this man here. And the third one 
was supposed to be Chris Hani. Hear what happened now. Now when he looked at the list, he smiled and said, the easiest to take down is not Mandela, neither is it Slovo, a race, Chris Hani. Remember that he was a truck driver and he drove in front of Chris Hani's house in Johannesburg every morning. And he knew what time Chris Hani was coming home. So you know what he did? He drove to the place around 10.20. In fact, he arrived in front of Chris Hani's house and parked in a corner at 10 o'clock in the morning. At exactly 10.20, Chris Hani arrived at home, parked his car, and when he opened the gate to move out, Janus Jacob Walus shouted, Chris! When Chris Hani turned around to see who was calling him, Puyaka, the gun exploded into his body. He slumped. And then this guy on the left, Walus, moved straight to him and shot at point blank three times into the head of Chris Hani. Puyaka, 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 and shattered his brains beyond resurrection. And whilst he was walking away, he was whistling to himself. <laughs> hey, he realized that some people had heard the sound of the gun. He started to run. He jumped into his car and vroom, he was gone. Little did he know that one old lady who was pampering her cat, meow, 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 right in front of the window, had seen him and taken down the number of the car. Jesus have mercy. Hey! She reported to the police. The police came on. He denied and denied and denied and denied. But he let himself loose when he said, if anybody will kill Chris Hani at all, it must be a rightist, a conservative who is so bloodthirsty. Oh my God. And every eye went straight to Clive Lewis. This is the man the whole of South Africa sees as a bloodthirsty racist. Investigations went on and boom, it came out that he was the one who provided the gun. He even provided the hit list and even some more intelligence. He was an MP. They went to court, they dragged him to court and he was convicted and sent thanks to life, in, in fact, to death. Later, it was commuted to life imprisonment. My brother, my sister, in 2012, he started from 2010 to fight for parole. It never happened. They refused over and over. The family of Chris Harney said no. He stayed in prison until 2015. My brother, my sister, at the age of 70, that was when they decided to parole him on health grounds because he was suffering from lung cancer. And it was terminal. You know what it means to say terminal? He was almost finished. He was paroled by the Cape High Court. And when he came out, my brother, my sister, he died a few months later. The racist, the dirty racist died. He was raised a Catholic a Christian. He was raised to love everybody. He left the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church was preaching too much about love. Love your neighbor. Love black people. Love everybody. Even love animals. He wanted a church that would preach hate black people. And he got it. It was the Africana Protestant Church. My brother, my sister, this has been the story of Clive Debbie Williams. He's presently resting in the hottest part of hell where Satan is busily sodomizing him. Oh.